All right, so I wanted to make a video basically explaining musicians and cast systems. Taking a bunch of rap musicians and rock musicians and applying a not so arbitrary cast to them, which is a relatively easy thing to do. Since you know how rock music has changed over the years. You know how rap music has changed over the years. What what are rock stars now? Basically rock stars are just fucking skaters. That's all they are. Skaters that listen to metalcore, deathcore, semen core, uh or some form of Christian friendly and post grunge. And it doesn't sound like Creed. That's the thing. Usually there's a very southern there's a southern vibe to it that's noticeable. And when I think about that it's like switchfoot, flyleaf what's that? They wrote Sound of Madness. Let's see, Thousand Foot Crunch. You'll you'll hear them write songs for WWE every now and then. Some of them are new metal too. So WWE likes a lot of hip Christian hard rock. And then there's like the pop rock hardcore metalcore. Aggressive. Yo, man, I, I cut my wrist one time. Uh, I'm a sapio demi pansexual with a little asexuality every Monday. And rap music is basically white guys trying to be black guys, trying to be white guys, trying to be black guys. Or a reverse of the cycle. So, yeah, uh, that's what it is now. You'll see a bunch of black John Cena's with handsomely Shawn Michaels with look dignified wearing, and you'll see a bunch of white guys that are Jason Radz's rapping, Starbucks rap. But to describe and identify the Dalits, the epitome of Dalit music is Tupac. Because Tupac's not just a thug rapper. That's the interesting thing. He's not just... He's not just some guy that shoots niggas and raps. There, there's more to, to him. He's basically doing it all because the system has oppressed him. And, of course, he talks about loving women, caring for them. We should be protecting them. And a lot of his music has this Christian undertone. A lot of guys call Tupac a Christian. At the same time, he makes a rap about how his mom wants him on his praise of the Lord bullcrap. And then uh, to get on his knees and, uh, oh, I... Don't know who the Virgin Mary is. They probably bang her. That that's what he says, and it's really, really disgusting that people want to claim that he's Christian, or how Kanye is apparently he calls himself God. Yet, oh well, the Holy Spirit is in all of us. So yeah, black guys are really black women in particular are really good at justifying blasphemy. They're really fucking good at it. Like that, they'll they'll find some way around it. At the same time, I don't really have a position on the Virgin Mary. That's some Catholic stuff. I don't know anything about Catholicism, other than the current schism, some of the history. I don't really care for the text or half of that stuff. It bores me. 
the architecture is really good, the culture, the music is really good, what they did is really good, uh, but when you get to that stuff, it's like, meh. Apathy is a really strong emotion, I feel. I don't feel boredom, I just feel this intense neutrality layered over everything. So Tupac's supposed to be the system of press me. Cops are going to chase anyone just because they're black and they look suspicious. Uh, just all this stuff at the same time. I was in prison. I saw. I heard these guys were talking shit, man. Yo, you want to start something with me? It's just like this. Feel me? This weird kind of a macho aggression that Tupac has. It's like, thug life, man. And it's hip, basically. Like, back then, when Tupac was active, when he was alive, and even a few years after he died, basically, yeah, he was, he was cool and everything. They were releasing works of him. He was exposing the government. This is why I don't like Dalits. Because Dalits want to oppose a status quo that, whether or not it be bad, they're not really opposing. They're just, like, hurting the wrong side. They're always against the wrong people. They're always hurting the wrong people. Innocent guys are getting clapped. They're contributing to the fire they want to put out. And that's because they really don't want to put out that fire. Because they are that fire. That's what they are. And then to describe the perfect example of uh, Brahmin, you got Kurt Cobain. What's Kurt Cobain? He's a guy from Washington. That his songs are essentially about hating conservatives. And trying to unite the Brahmins together, the punk rock university guys, the stoned out hippies, uh, try to abandon all that, they just have their orgies. He, the weird alternative indie rock guys, he tried to unite that all together in music. So he created his own manifesto, and people love Cobain to this day because. That's what he represents. He's the anti vizier which is good enough with all the padding, all the things we know about Cobain, that that's Brahmin enough. Just a guy that wears flannel, has this kind of long, messy hair, and hates Vizia. So he's that epitome right there. That's what he is, that's what his role is now as a rock guy, since grunge has ultimately become something that has melted off into this post-grunge kind of thing, or even new metal, where new metal is interesting, where new metal is the first relevant fusion to me of Brahmin and Dalit music. People call out bands like Limp Bizkit for that. But what surprises me is that people call out Korn. Korn did this really interesting thing where there are a bunch of like white Hispanics or mestizo Mexicans and they don't rap in their songs. A lot of guys think, oh, these guys are like want to be white rappers. No. What uh, Jonathan Davis does is he sometimes scats in some of his early music. He did a beatbox thing uh, to one of his, to one of those popular songs from the third album, Follow the Leader. But what generally flows of corn is that they're pimp rock. They're not rap rock. There's a dolletness within their music but it's 
it, it's there's no hip hop aspect to it that's really legit. The bass is really low. It's supposed to be kind of funky in a way. They do have the funk rock roots. So basically, they're they're Alice in Chains meets Nirvana meets Faith No More meets what's that band that did Californication and used to rap rock with a little funk back in the 80s and 90s. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Why did I forget about them? How did I remember Faith No More but not Red Hot Chili Peppers? That's how you know I'm fucking weird. And we got those two guys. Tupac and Kurt Cobain. I mean, it's obvious that Kurt hates the vices. Isn't that what his... That song he did was about, what was it? I remember I used to do the riff to this on guitar all the time. Come on, I gotta find this shit out in my head. I gotta search within. Oh, fuck. Let me think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type this shit right now. In Bloom. How did I forget that? Well, if you're asking, why don't I consider John Lennon to be that epitome? Well, John Lennon is the homophobe that Kurbane would diss, and he's European, so he doesn't count. I mean, the Beatles started off in England, and then they did some tours in Germany right before they invaded the U.S. Big deal. Okay, what else? I mean, those are the two main groups I want to talk about. I don't care about the Aunt Yodges. Because I'm not really out to oppose them. As much, they're not a benefit in and of themselves, but they're not a visible threat that I see on a regular basis. It's not like the fucking Robins and the Dalits. And uh, even though the Optimates were once a threat to this aristocracy, I really can't identify them as much since they're dying out. But, alright, so these are my thoughts. This is Mr. Wonka 7. I don't know why it took me so long to make this video. Just searching my thoughts. Burnt out, not really thinking about anything. Look like shit. And, hold my dick. Just hold it.